Hey, what is going on? Chances are you're probably watching this video because you are interested in an alternative career as a pharmacist in digital health, pharmacy startups, healthcare startups, and all that. Is there a career? In today's video, I actually interview my really good friend, Tim. He's the owner of Digital Apothecary, and he ta often talks about digital health startups and all that. He's an advocate for it. This is actually a shorter clip of our full interview. Make sure to watch that full clip just to have that context of our conversation and stuff. Sometimes when you take a snippet, you're just like, what? I'm in the dark. So that should definitely help. Also, also make, sure to uh, make sure to follow my friend Tim on his website. I'll leave a link below. And as always, make sure to like, comment, subscribe to this uh, video. And please let me know if you are looking for a career in digital health, please let me know what you are looking into. What are you considering? Let's start a conversation below and hey, maybe I can get Tim for a part two. Anyways, guys, let's get on to the video. Talk to you soon. Bye. I'm kind of curious, man. Um, what do you think the major opportunities going forward uh, in digital health are for pharmacists right now? Uh, number one for me is I would say adherence. Yeah. So, okay, so I'm going to... So you're watching, you can see this, but so like, yeah. you know, we take a ubiquitous pill bottle, right? Yeah. So Kevin, you are now sick. You have to take this once, twice a day. Yeah. Good luck. Have fun. Yeah. You know, that's, that's basically what we do, right? Yeah. Like I could give you constant, like, you know, take it with water, take yeah. it with this, but I'm not going to monitor you. Yeah. Your doctor's not going to monitor you. They're going to watch, like, if this was like, your hypertension, like, did your yeah. blood pressure go up or down? Yeah. And let's suppose you took it 50% of the time. You go back to the doctor's office and they're like, okay, your blood pressure's still up. Yeah. Did you take your medications? Uh, maybe you yeah. did. Maybe you didn't. Yeah. I don't know. So we're just going to add on more therapy. Yeah. So let's just kick it up a notch. Let's go with like the Internet of Things and like Bluetooth Connect. Uh, IoT. Stuff. Yes, yeah. exactly. So let's put a smart pill bottle out there so yeah. that every time you open a damn thing, it says you took your medication. And now let's click that data like you said earlier. Now yeah. we have this data saying someone opened a pill bottle. I can infer then that someone probably removed a medication Yeah. and that they're taking it. But let's go further down this rabbit hole. There's uh, one company, there's two companies that are making it, but one company I really like following is yeah. Proteus Digital Health. Yeah. You basically wear a patch on uh, above your left uh, abdomen where your stomach is. Yeah. And when you swallow a pill, it dissolves in your stomach and the patch detects that that pill was dissolved. No freaking way. That's yeah. freaking cool, dude. So now I can tell if you're actually swallowing your medication. Yeah. And the first digital uh, smart pills on the market. It's called Abilify MySite and it's from Otsuka. Yeah. And basically it's been for... Um, major depressive disorder, bipolar disorder, and yeah. for schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. And so basically, and but I mean, it can be applied for anything else. Yeah. So the big focus is oral oncology, because yeah. you really want them to be in that pharmacokinetic profile of taking the drugs. Mm -hmm. You want this for you know, um, psychiatric disorders, and also for infectious diseases. Yeah. Like one that's going on is Gilead's Truvada, which is used for PrEP, yeah. for exposure. Yeah. So, you know, if you have a partner or anything else, do you want to know that they're taking their medication? You can just look at the app because you can share the data and be like, oh, they swallowed their pill today. Mm. And then, and also for the insurers, and like hepatitis drugs are so expensive, the special yeah. market is so expensive. Yeah. What's a few hundred dollars more, a thousand dollars, just to make sure they actually finish their therapy, achieve like a ninety-five percent adherence rate, and they get cured? Yeah. I would, I would pay for that just so I can know it. And then think about us as pharmacists. Like, wouldn't you like just a, like, you know, dashboard saying, oh, you know, John Dill actually didn't take his drug today or yesterday. Yeah. This is someone I need to call on and figure out what's going on with their life and everything. Yeah. Versus like giving the same spiel to everyone. Because some people are naturally adherent, but how do we identify the people who are not adherent yeah. or that need that little finer touch? And then can we bill for that service? Yeah. That's what we need. And there's um there's a, so many factors, like having more data, like those data points, so important for healthcare professionals, especially us pharmacists, because Y yes. How do you know if the med <laughs> so yes, funny. Just now yelling at me because <laughs> you didn't take anything, so you opened it. <laughs> but like the real question is, how do you know if the patient is actually taking the medication? So you can't just increase the medication dose if they're not taking it consistently and stuff. And one thing I love about that too, like about technologies like that, is that it's really cost effective too, right? You can obviously it's not sustainable just to have like a pharmacist knock at your door for every single dose and just be like, Hey, did you, and provide accountability? Hey, did you take your medication? It yes. doesn't work like that, but using technology makes it really, really scalable as well. Love it. Um, kind of, um, so you said that's the first uh, opportunity for pharmacists. Are there any other opportunities that you see? 
other so than, like you know we look at this whole pharmacogenomics test like 23 and me yeah. I think they're gonna get into big um if you haven't followed it they actually rolled out this whole thing they can send you reports saying what drugs interact with each other yeah. and you're supposed to take it to your pharmacist to talk to about really? i think that's really cool so yeah. you're seeing things like that um i am getting away from the whole hype of like uberfication of pharmacy like how do we get drugs quicker how do we package it differently like yeah I'm more interested in like how can we expand pharmacist clinical services. Mm. That's that's I think that's the magic that has to occur. That's yeah. where I think more innovation needs to happen. And the other thing is this whole focus on how to engage patients in their home. Like we're so focused being in a clinic, even at the pharmacy and such, but how do I, you know, engage with people to do healthy behaviors within their home setting? Like, can I just like give you a quiz on your iPhone that you basically say, hey, go over this. Do you know what your drugs are? Do you know what interactions? Great. And then, you know, can I give you a reward for that? Yeah. Or being like, you know, did you do healthy behaviors? Did you walk today? Did you do this? What did you eat? How do we make these behavioral changes? And mm. having a pharmacist as a coach, I could see pharmacists being a digital health coach at the end of the day mm. that could help be a place where people can buy products, teach them what to do, mm -hmm. and monitor them, help them out. Yeah. I think that is like the magic mix that needs to occur. It's just a matter of us as a profession stepping up and seizing that at that time. Yeah, do you think it's ability or do you think it's more willingness to kind of step up to the plate at this point like for a lot of different pharmacists? I think we have the ability. I definitely think we have the ability. Yeah. I think willingness is taking that leap to do such a thing and mm. also at the end of the day who's going to pay you to do it payers yeah that's going to be the that's the thing that we're missing this is where we need either people to lobby for us to have expanded stuff like that mm -hmm. or at least find ways for us to have these ability to bill for certain uh, claims under yeah. cms to get paid for it and i think once we can see that then we have a whole new market where you know you have a pharmacist that's still tied to medications in a way that's not just dispensing yeah and you know, at this current time, I really encourage that we need to find ways for pharmacists not just to be tied to dispensing fees. Like, we need to think beyond. Like, you know, this is how I look at it. Pharma is saying they need to think beyond the pill in terms of coming up with new ways to make money from technology. Pharmacy yeah. needs to think beyond the fill. Yeah. We need to think beyond just filling medications, but how to offer clinical services, services. using technology. Yeah, because, um, I mean, like, a lot of pharmacists are just based basically acting out of arbitrage right basically flipping uh flipping medication essentially that's what you're doing but um when you venture into the services uh arena it it becomes um there's there's no there's no acquisition cost for your service right oh other than going like pharmacy school or something like yeah. that but like you know there's a better profit margins and um i think it it would be a lot better for pharmacists. And I think pharmacists, they like actually providing services and stuff too. I mean, like, <clears throat> bottom line is, you know, yeah. pharmacy started off as like alchemists, yeah. apothecaries that basically yeah. had their own business and run. They were entrepreneurs. And yeah. then only in the 60s and 70s, did we see this explosion of the chain yeah. and such. I mean, that's why I call myself a digital apothecary. I like to think yeah. I'm one of the first pharmacists interested in this space. But I would like to see everyone become a digital pharmacist. Yeah. And the one thing I would really say is, no one knows pharmacy really well. We don't do a good job enough, no. you know, letting anyone else outside know. Like everyone says, oh, I go to pharmacy, I get a medication filled and I leave. But they don't know our knowledge. They don't know what services we can offer. We do a bad job actually of basically selling ourselves. Because just think about our clientele. They're generally elder patients. Yeah. They get to know us and then they die. And then there's no return investment on that person to like share that knowledge with others and get them in. Physicians and nurses, they see you when you're young. You're, you know that scary person who vaccinates you first. But then, you, <laughs> you know, you have annual appointments and things. Yeah. And they're a face and they're a friendly face. And you get, you know, you have more ties there. Yeah. We're not in media and such. Yeah. So that's very tough. Yeah. So what it comes down to is we are one of the only people that really know our business. Yeah. So what it turns into is if we want to make a change, if we want to make companies, if you are venturous and such, yeah. now is actually a great time for any pharmacist that's willing to take the plunge to make their own startup yeah. to out there and do it. And the big thing is investors, money and such. They don't know problems exist because it's we don't advertise the problems of pharmacy face. Yeah. We don't. We don't put it out there. Yeah. And for that reason you actually have to sell yourself and show what the problem is and explain to investors like, this is what we're facing. And yeah. once you paint that picture, you'll find the money because people will be like, oh, I didn't even know that existed. Yes. How can I get a better service of that? Yeah, and I, I kind of want to jump into this too. It's just like, hey, let's say I am, a, maybe I am a pharmacy student. Maybe I'm an existing pharmacist. I have the ability, right? But I, I, I'm willing to jump into this. What are my first steps of kind of jumping in and kind of like, expanding this um expanding our like clinical services and stuff through a digital age 
Definitely. So look at, so you have to think of it, is this something you want to offer like regionally, locally, mm -hmm. or expand beyond? Um, do you, what is your knowledge base and such? Are you, do you have any clinical expertise or have you do, have you rolled out anything in the past? Have you really facilitated anything majorly? Yeah. Um, and from that basically, you know, you can help design, you know, what problems do you want to solve? Is yeah. there something else out there that you've seen that you want to go into? Mm -hmm. I would honestly say it's not a one man show. I think you need to form some working relationships with others. Yeah. Um, I actually published a paper out there and it's about this whole thing. Um, then what I really focused on is there's a lot of like makers movements or innovation groups in different parts of the United States where yeah. they bring health professionals together to talk about problems mm. and you work together over there. There's also hackathons that exist across the United States. Go to those things, see mm. what people are talking about, bring in your own angle. And once you get enough experience to hear about what people are talking about or looking into, yeah. this will help you understand like even like making connections with people in business and tech programmers yeah. and then you can see do I want to form a team and being at these events and at these locations can also help you understand how the investment process yeah. and if you actually have something that's going to sounds great and people buy into it they can help facilitate you moving down that path that is probably the lowest way to get into this space right now without having to do it all on your own and yeah. figuring it out and there's no n there's no way that you can do it on your own because there's so many moving parts and you have to leverage other people's knowledge base and um, all that as well what time is it by the way Oh, it's um, 2 o'clock. Okay. I was just checking to make sure cool. I didn't have a message from uh, another co <laughs> Cool. No problem. Um, I guess what are the biggest, like, we kind of dived into it. You said adherence, billing for clinical services. But um, what are also some major opportunities or major problems us pharmacists can fix with digital uh, in digital healthcare right now? Yeah, I mean, like, the one area that i think that's really good for objective information that we collect mm. is like data analytics i think that's like a mm. huge space healthcare professionals as a whole but i think pharmacists themselves can get into yeah um like it doesn't require like you have to go out there and be a whole programmer but understanding how to interpret and use it yeah um programming though i think is useful i think that it opens up a new era where we're seeing a lot of like automation informatics that are being brought into just a pharmacy workflow yeah so i think those things will open up but they're not going to be like everyone needs that job yeah, that's the big thing that I, I hesitate to tell students. Like, it's a niche area that could also be flooded if we're not careful. Yeah, that's true. It, because we're we're that's getting really niche. But I definitely see like something like um, uh, combining like pharmacy and like data science. Mm -hmm. That that definitely would be a huge opportunity. Because here's the thing: like all these companies are doing wearable devices. Uh, we're getting better, more and more data. Now, how do we kind of interpret this data? in a way that is clinically like clinically impactful you know exactly and yeah. i think that's where we need to really look at training pharmacists pharmacy students and just making the field aware this is going to be the future where do we mm. want to play in this space mm. the biggest danger we can have is just think that a status quo has been established mm. we could just sit back and relax and that things won't change mm. we're going to shoot ourselves in the foot yeah. and at the end of the day and i think the I think the pharmacists that will stand out here in the next few years are going to yeah. be the ones that actually recognize this and push ahead. I'm really excited for a younger generation. I think um, they're going to be the ones that can enable this tech. They grew up with it. They've seen it. They can envision how it can change health, and that's yeah. what they should be really going for. Um, guy asked us, man, since we're talking about the younger generation, if someone who is a lot younger right now is watching this, what's the biggest advice that you could give them to kind of like jump into this uh, field? So, you know, from, from, from an academic uh, stance, you know, it's not about the grades you make in school. It's also about the hands you shake. Yeah. In my, in my um, experience, and what I would say for a lot of people is network like hell. Yeah. You need to network. And, but, you know, who do you network with? It's not just current practicing healthcare professionals or pharmacists and such. It's also going outside the medical space. Yes. And that's, and that's what I think. I think. I think a lot of people in healthcare – just go to the healthcare conferences. They go to the CEs. They go to this, uh, but they don't expand beyond. Like they yeah. don't network beyond. Like who's what, what's a what's a business lingo? Like what's that stuff like that? Go to like a tech hub and things like that. And like what are people really considering? I think that is something that can make you shine. You can still be a pharmacist, but you can also be able to do all these other things. And I think that's what people in healthcare really. This is where their minds snap. They're like. Well, why can't I? Why can't why why can't I do both? I, yeah. I can only do one, and I think that's the fragmentation that occurs. Yeah. Like yeah. you can be a creator and a pharmacist. You can do all this stuff and be a pharmacist. It doesn't have to be just one or the other. Yeah, it's not. Um, what's the term? A mutually exclusive. 
Yes. Yes, yes yeah, exactly. Yeah. Love it.